Hey y'all, I'm here with my favorite VA loan lender, Jason Steyer. You've seen him, you've heard him, you've heard me talk about him. We've actually talked about this um, before, a few months back when this market started going crazy, some of the myths out there on the VA loan. Y'all, still hearing the same tired myths on why you telling your sellers not to take VA loans. So let's just go over that again so we can dispel it. So buyer's agents understand how to educate seller's agents. So seller's agents understand how to educate their sellers. And we'll just create one little nice round wheel of education so we make sure those that serve our country get a fair shot at a great home without somebody out there spilling rumors costing those military families homes. So Jason, we talked about these and you and I laugh about these. Yeah. So I'm just throwing them out there. Yeah, and let's talk. you just... Tell them how absurd it is. <laughs> um, I don't, my seller doesn't want to take the VA loan because they don't want to pay nothing out of pocket, Chastity, nothing. And because it's a VA loan, the seller has to pay something out of pocket to non-allowables. Yeah. So that is probably one of the biggest ones, fees. Everybody's concerned about their money. Yeah. Right? Everybody for so many years has been told that sellers have to pay for all these non-allowables and, and things like that. So here's the truth is that the only time those not allowables actually come into play is if the lender is charging a 1% origination fee, okay? So this is where you have to pay attention. If you don't, you can get your seller, you can get you in a bad way. So that origination fee can be collected in either a 1% flat fee or it can be collected in itemized, so admin, processing, underwriting, things like that. So you have to pay attention to fee sheets because lenders out there will, and there's certain ones that we all know, that will charge that, mm -hmm. okay? They don't tell anybody. And this is how these myths and these misconceptions get started. Mm -hmm. Seller, and here's the other thing with that, is it doesn't mean the seller actually has to pay those. It just means the veteran cannot. Right. So anybody in the transaction can pay for them. Listed buyer's agent, the lender. And if, agent, if the, in my like opinion, share it three ways. yeah, if the lender is charging those, they need to pay for it. Yeah, That's their or responsibility. change lenders. Or change lenders, there's that too, mm -hmm. right? There's options. and. Is it all boils down to, and you and I talk about this a lot, is education. Yep. You've got to educate yourself. Okay, mm -hmm. Not everybody has your best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. Just because they have a veteran in their name, sometimes maybe they don't have their best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. Relationships matter. Yep. Period. So to recap that, if the lender doesn't charge the 1% origination fee, seller doesn't pay anything. If they do, somebody else can pay it, or they can change lenders and get it paid. Next one, seller got to pay that termite fee, and the buyer can't pay the termite fee. Yeah, so I've seen deals blow up over the $95 termite fee. So, if the lender's not charging 1%, that termite inspection is included in that non-allowable, okay? Here in the great state of Texas, even if the lender is charging 1%, there's what's called the state deviation page that the VA has right there on the va.gov website. You can go search it. And even if the lender is charging 1%, that termite is still an allowable fee to the veteran to pay. But the arguments that you see either on social media and all these other different things, it doesn't exist. They're just, they don't know. Yeah. And that's what creates the anxiety and therefore they spew out this stuff. They just, it's just rumors. So to recap, seller doesn't have to pay the termite inspection and buyer can in the state of Texas because it's state specific in some cases. Next one, uh, the appraisal is always lowered or more conservative on VA loans because it's a government loan. Yeah, so especially in these markets. I mean, these markets... You know they're they're kind of crazy. So the the seller has no obligation, but the the appraisers that are out there appraising VA loans are the same ones that are doing FHA, they're the same ones that are doing conventional. They're looking at the same comps, everything. Yeah, it's okay. worth what it's worth. It's worth it's the <laughs> market dictates what it's worth, but not the appraiser. Mm -hmm. But here's the beautiful thing about the VA home loan. And it's the only home loan in existence that allows this. Even if it does appraise for lower, and you know, based on your data, okay, and you use the word data, that it should appraise for that. You have two opportunities to rebut that value. Mm -hmm. In the Tidewater process, and if that doesn't work, the reconsideration of value process, Straight which to goes the directly yeah. to the VA, which is reviewed by a staff appraisal reviewer at the Regional Loan Center. So if your data is there, you have the opportunity, not once, but twice, 
prove your case. You can't do that with convention or FHA. So there's another reason to take VA loan because you do have the opportunity to fight because most every, everybody's overpaying for homes right now. So, I mean, we can't keep using that same excuse because it's going to appraise lower. If you're overpriced and overlisting it on the price, yeah, it's going to appraise lower. And you already know that. Mm -hmm. um, you also said, what was the percentage of loans closed? You use that 80 some percent? Of VA loans closed or it was 70? seventy-eight point I think seventy-eight point six percent of the closure rate. So people will talk about well it's a VA loan, they don't close or they don't close on time. Yeah. Seventy-eight percent of VA loans close, okay, as compared to conventional, these are twenty twenty numbers, was like seventy nine point two. Yeah. So the difference is negligible. Yeah, at it's, best. it's on par. Right? Well, another reason is all the, in, the we have to have a home inspection. The VA requires a home inspection, and they don't want to fix anything. They're so stringent on, on the condition of the house. Bust that one out for us. Yeah, so the VA has a minimum property standard, okay? What they're looking for are deficiencies in foundation, things like that, okay? Yeah. Issues. Anything that's cosmetic. Leaks. Right. You know, Safety quality, hazards, and I don't think it exposed wiring, broken it. glass, things like that. Even yeah. on a conventional loan, they can call those out. They're, it's and deferred, FHA, because FHA's government, yep. back, they have the same thing. It's deferred maintenance. Okay, yeah. so the beautiful thing about the VA home loan and dealing with people who know is that even if an appraiser goes out there and call, calls out things that might be deemed to be cosmetic in nature. You can ask for those repairs to be waived at the VA level. We can send a letter to them, ask them to do it. What? Minimum you property requirement. The only thing that has to be done are things that deem to be a safety hazard. That's a non-negotiable. So peeling paint on houses that were built before 1978. Foundational issues. Nobody wants to no buy a house with that. Right. Nobody wants to yeah. buy a house Leaking with foundation. Roof. Right. Yeah. Nobody wants to buy a house like that anyway. No. They're there to protect you. They're not going to let you buy something that's not going to be worthy. But if I have to talk to a listing agent, we always give them the information like it's they're not picky. Yeah. And if they are picky, if you're dealing with people reason. who know, <laughs> it's for a reason. We can we can push back. But yeah. a lot of people don't know, so they don't push back and they just they accept it as the status quo. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that the seller has to pay for it. If mm -hmm. there's something that needs to be fixed, that can be negotiated for the buyer to fix. There's nowhere in the VA handbook that says the seller has required yeah. to do anything. Yeah. These are things that people in the industry have put you on their own. You need to know and negotiate. Yeah. That's it. And so repairs. And if it's got that big of a deal that it's going to be called out, then none of the other two major loans is going to fund it either. I mean, all three of those are backed by private investors. Nobody wants to put their name behind and their money behind a house that is not a good investment because it's an investment for the bank ultimately as well in case the buyer defaults. The best thing Absolutely. about VA is that they got a big old uncle co-signing for them that makes it even stronger. And so yeah. to bust that myth, y'all, it's just, it's just got to be a good house it, that any of us would want if we're paying top dollar over uh, value. You know, I hate when I see somebody's paying 15000 over value and they, they gripe about an $80 repair that they should have fixed on their house yeah, in the I first think place. When people's egos get into play. Yeah. They're not willing to accept yeah. what it is. They want to be right. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, ultimately, the problem is, is either veteran or the, or the military member suffers yep. because of that. And that's yep. what kills me and you as a professional. Oh, yeah. They're suffering that. every day for just sheer lack of education, which our industry should would, should do better. I mean, you, you've got to educate yourself. Even if you don't work with VA loans a lot, no, you don't have to be the subject matter expert, but agents, we're much more than just open doors nowadays. We're advocates, and that means we got to know more about these processes in order to help our clients make the best decision. And also our buyers and sellers make the best decision. So to recap on that, don't confuse inspection for appraisal. A lot of people confuse the two because the VA does not require a home inspection. That's a personal choice and a buyer should absolutely do it. Even if you're competing and you say, I'm not gonna ask for repairs, you still need to do it to make sure that you know what's going on with that home. And then the appraisal, the appraiser is actually charged by the lender to look at certain items that he just talked about to make sure that they have a good investment ultimately. And ultimately, it's not just about the buyer, it's really to protect their own investment. Sure. And then, um, so don't mix those two up. And then um, the, the other one, it has to have a stove. If it's a VA, it's got to have a stove. Got to have a cooking source. And I used to say it because somebody told me that when I was well, a young Well, some, some would even it. argue that a microwave is a cooking source. Or a uh, air fryer. Even a hot plate. Yeah. Right? You got some 
Brokey twos yeah. or E3s, they may only have a hot leg. Yeah. So, but it's a real thing. But again, it's, it's, you have to educate yourself or deal with people who are educated. So you've got to ask these questions. You've got to ask qualifying questions when you're interviewing agents to, to represent you. Because yep. this is the largest investment that you're ever going to have. Mm -hmm. It needs to be treated as such. I mean, I know maybe your brother, sister's uncle got their license, but again, no disrespect to them. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to dealing with these ins and outs of the VA home loan benefit, mm -hmm. on the real estate side and the lending side, if you don't deal with people who know, it's going to end up poorly. Oh yeah, even even some of the lenders you're using for VA loans don't know. I just schooled a lender that was on the other side. I was a selling agent and schooled a lender on the other side that had a, a VA client that was you know, talking sideways of stuff that needed to happen. And I actually quoted the, the you know, VA guidance because, you know, PCS team comes from education first because we want to know, and that's how we protect their clients. Um, what are any, uh, I know those are the biggest, are there any I'm missing that you've heard recently? Um. Septa tank has to be drained before the inspection. Is yeah, so here's the thing. We don't deal with that much in El Paso, but I know a lot of our, our what the VA requires is a walkover septic inspection by the appraiser. If they denote any deficiencies, if you've got things bubbling up through the ground or things well, like yeah. that not working, outside of that, the VA does not require any inspections. Okay. Oh, one argued me the other day that it has to actually be pumped out so the inspector can walk in there and actually see the walls. Yeah, that's, I don't think any inspector's gonna walk in there. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying I'm not walking in this, but no, yeah. that is not required. Um, private wells, Water tests, you gotta make sure the water is potable to be able to drink, yep. you know, things like that. Um, we had one the other day, this is kind of an odd one, but again, something out there, especially in Texas, right? You're dealing mm -hmm. with private roads. Mm -hmm. Yes, all that. Okay, really. private road agreements. Used to, the VA is very specific on that. Mm -hmm. They have we have to have something filed with the home with, with people on that block. Now, they used to be able to have the veterans sign a letter saying they're willing to take on the maintenance of these private roads. Mm -hmm. That's a little scary because you're taking on the deficiency yeah. of the entire road. Yeah. That's a long road. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, now they'll do it as a one-off basis, depending on where the house that they're buying lays on the road. But again, you're never going to know that unless you deal with somebody who knows. Right. That's a that's. Yeah. But in Texas, that's kind of a, a normal thing. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you that you can't build if you're building a house. Obviously, building's very popular these days. Um, that you can't build what they would consider unique properties like a barn dominium or A-frames or metal yeah. homes, you can absolutely do that. Or mobile homes. Or mobile homes. The VA yeah. does those things. Yeah. It just all boils down to comps. Yeah. But there's and no some restriction. Rules around the mobile homes. Sure. They got on the land. They got to own the land. Yeah. Um, got to be tied down. Wheels are moving. Once you're taking your collateral <laughs> down the road. <laughs> um, <laughs> Can't be off the block. Right. They'll do double wides, triple wides, all those different things. And, you know, we have to have structural engineer reports to make sure it's not going to blow away. Mm -hmm. But you can absolutely do them. It's lender specific. So the one thing I'll say about all of that is lenders will try to use the phrase the VA requires. Yeah. Okay. And this is where it's, it, the, it's hard to differentiate because you're trusting that person mm -hmm. and they say the VA requires, some people are just gonna take that as fact. Mm -hmm. But the, here's what I'll say to that, and I'm gonna give you this example, credit scores. Yep. The VA has no credit score. Another method. myth, yep. Okay, right there in chapter four, it says nothing about credit, zero, okay? Every lender in existence puts their own credit score minimum on the program. You're, you're back it's back our back. risk, yeah. right? We're lending the money. So we got to know that we got to get paid back. Some of that may be 580, 600, 620, 640, depending on who it is. But if, if you have a lender that says, well, the VA requires this, the VA requires that, all I'm going to encourage you to do is ask them where in the handbook that it states that, yep. and then go look yourself. It's right there online, va.gov. Yep. You can go find all of this. So when we preach these things, and I kind of feel like a Southern preacher sometimes, <laughs> we preach right from that handbook. That's our work Bible. Yeah. Right. We don't talk about things like that. And if we do, we will state that it's a lender requirement and not the VA requirement. Yeah. Those two things get confused a lot. And you got to be aware of that. I appreciate you helping us dispel some of those myths. I hope yep. this video provided you some value. Go read that information so you know. Selling agents, please, please stop regurgitating false information about the VA loan to your sellers in turn basically crapping on those that served our country that 
in my opinion, should be the first one in line to get a house that provided it's comparable to what everybody else is making them. We just had a seller choose conventional. I know they made less money yep. because the agent misinformed them, which yep. is unfortunate. Yep. And how many uh, loans you close a year? How many last year you closed? 242. 242 last year. And I have another guy that closed two in the last 28 years trying to tell me <laughs> we couldn't file a yep. to notice of value to the VA itself. And yep. how many of those have you seen get declined when they actually go to reconsideration of value? So they're usually successful. They right? are, but we track Tidewater, so the first part of that. So last year, we as a company, and I don't know what the VA numbers are because they don't track them, but I can tell you what we did. We ordered a little over 3,400 VA appraisals, and less than 6% of those had Tidewater call. That's an amazing stat, but so we have appraisal issues with VA loans. Yeah, 94 and a half percent of the time. And that's company out. wide with benchmark, yeah. y'all. I know you you heard him say 242, so some of you sharpshooters are going to be like, oh, he said he did 242 yeah. and he ordered 3,400 yeah. appraisals. Come on now. Yeah. Really so that's, I mean, they are the same. They're there to protect the veteran. The best thing I in can tell you to do if, in the military family is, is that you got to build relationships with these people on a local basis. We yeah. try to do that because we have to work with them as much as you and I work yeah. together because we do a lot of VA business. And if you treat them like a second class citizen, that's how they're gonna treat you. Yeah. We're, we're, we're there to build relationships across that aisle so they they do what's in the best interest of the military member, the veteran, not us. It's them we're trying to get to. Well, if they need an amazing VA loan officer, who can they partner with? That'd be me. Tell them your info. All right, you can check me out on uh, Facebook. You can see me on YouTube, VA Loan Boss. Is all under there. Uh, my cell number 469 340 6451. Thank you for your email? service. Your email? Team at VA Loan Boss at benchmark.us via email. We thank you for your service and we look forward to serving you. I'm Chastity with Preferred Closing Specialist Team here in El Paso with Keller Williams. Thank you so much for tuning in. If we can help you in any way here in El Paso, let us know. If you have questions about something you're hearing or you're a buyer looking to buy, um, and somebody's told you something crazy, reach out to me or Jason. My number is 915-873-2772. And my email is chastity at pcslpaso.com. Jim, did we miss anything? No, you guys have it at all uh, pretty good. If you're going to, yeah, no, I mean, nailed it. And remember, no cap on the VA. If you haven't used it, don't let people tell you you can't. If you have used it, there is a cap. It depends on your area. You can also find that at the VA.gov. Um, just... You know, educate yourself out there. As an industry, we owe our sellers and buyers more than what we're giving right now. Hope you all have an amazing day, and thanks for tuning in. See you guys.